Hi, I'm Carl King, a composer and filmmaker in Los Angeles, and I'm going to do a walkthrough of some parts from Guns a Blazin' Main Adventure Theme, from a score I wrote for a comic book by Mike Wellman and Raphael Navarro. It's about some time-traveling cowboys, so I figured it deserved a heroic galloping anthem. I work in Cubase, and I used entirely VSL on this orchestration, a standard list of around 30 virtual instruments, adding up to about a 70-piece orchestra. I have, from top to bottom, woodwinds, piccolo, two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, a bassoon, a contrabassoon. I've got brass, French horns, fanfare trumpets, plus three other trumpets blended in, four trombones, and a tuba. And there's also a harp. and full orchestral percussion going on, all VSL. And everything so far is the VI series, except for my strings. Violins one and two, viola, cello, and contrabasses. All the strings here are synchron strings. There's also a piano playing along very low in the mix. Everything is loaded up into Vienna Ensemble and using the Teldex scoring stage with Mir X. For this piece of adventure music, the main statement is on trumpet, so I chose the fanfare trumpets. Now this patch is actually six trumpets, but I also added a couple of extra trumpets from Dimension Brass. There's also a third Dimension Brass trumpet down here, playing along with a lower counter melody with the uh, French horns and clarinet. So that's a ridiculous total of nine trumpets, uh, in theory, but don't tell anyone. So the question is, how do you make a virtual trumpet sound more like a real person is blowing through it? And that's where my favorite feature of Dimension Brass and other VSL libraries comes in. It's called Velocity X-Fade. If you look along here at the bottom of my piano roll, you'll see I've got constant automation happening, all drawn in with the pencil tool. Now, many people also do this with the uh, mod and expression sliders on their keyboards or controllers, but I usually draw them in. I have assigned CC1, usually known as mod, as the control for it, because that's just my own preference. By default, it's CC2 or breath control. Check out how every note has its own velocity curve or level here. This controls the dynamics, how hard or soft the player is blowing. What the sample library is doing is blending between a lower dynamic and a higher dynamic. And there are actually typically four velocity layers here, from piano to mezzo piano, to mezzo forte, to fortissimo. And it allows us to crossfade through them gradually, so we get a very smooth curve from soft to loud and back. Now check out what it sounds like if I completely disable the velocity x-fade. Often I will uh, also adjust these curves individually between the players. So for instance, trumpet one and trumpet two are not completely identical. Now, velocity X fade is also extremely important to woodwind phrases. Since woodwinds in the real world are powered by air, there's gonna be this constant fluctuation of the player's breath going through them. The notes will rise and fall with the exhalation of the player throughout the phrase. So check out some of these little fast woodwind runs. Here's the flute with velocity X fade. And here's what it would sound like without the velocity X fade. Here's a random example from the VSL epic horns. If you notice, it sounds very sweet and, and nice and gentle in the lower uh, velocities. But when I boost it up, very big difference. With VSL and Velocity X-Fade, you get all of those tonal and dynamic changes that happen with a real instrument. And the effects are as dramatic as they should be. Velocity X-Fade can also be applied to percussion for rolls, as I did here on this big timpani crescendo. Or on
on the snare crescendo at the end of the track. Well, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on VSL and their Velocity X-Fade feature. I'm Carl King, and I'll see you next time.